Well, good evening on this beautiful All Saints Sunday morning. Welcome to all of you saints. One of my favorite authors, Thomas Merton, once said, all you have to do to want to be a saint is to want that. May all of us want to be even more who we're meant to be as we celebrate this Eucharist on All Saints Day. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, God to you to all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires known, known. And, and from you no, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts, thoughts of our hearts by, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. After this I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. 
The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. A reading from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Good morning. What is a saint? A few months ago, I had a wonderful conversation with some students in my philosophy course regarding sainthood. We had spent the past few weeks studying various worldviews pertaining to how philosophy and religion impacts artistic expression. After watching a short documentary about the St. John Coltrane Church in San Francisco, one of my students raised an important question. What is a saint? It must be noted that the student and probably some of her peers were experiencing what John Collins of the Bible Project refers to as a disturbance amongst one's categories. This is when one's presuppositions or previous understandings encounter a challenge. My student's question revealed that this Saint John was unlike the saints she knew or ever heard about. This Saint John apparently did not completely work within her saint criteria. This encounter stretched the student's category so much that she kept asking the question, what is a saint? As someone who hears the term in various situations, I want to share some descriptions which have come my way. But first of all, do all saints play instruments like the one in the documentary? Are they rich, poor, famous? Do they live in villages alongside the masses? Do they hide away in mountains, forests, or on islands? Do saints adhere to the vegan diet? Do saints dwell in the here and now? 
Or is sainthood only attainable after someone has passed on? What is a saint? In some traditions, a saint is defined as one who has performed miracles of healing. In others, a saint is one who has overcome tragic circumstances. They have somehow defeated life's giants and now live a life free of challenges. In Hollywood, a saint is a double agent who magically appears, disappears, and reappears in diverse situations, outsmarting his adversaries. Some believe that saints should not get angry. Moreover, saints should do everything right. This term is often used to describe people who tolerate those people in circumstances that no one else will tolerate. Some believe that in order to be a saint, one must be martyred. According to the song, We Fall Down by Donnie McClurkin, a saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up. Others still hold to the belief that saints are a selected few, while some think saints are those who pay weekly visits to the local church building. Again, what is a saint? Individually, these descriptions and definitions may or may not explain the true nature of a saint. So we must look to Jesus to fully understand what a saint is. Jesus' teaching in Matthew's gospel shifts our attention away from the what to the who. God's word personalizes the ethereal and abstract aspects of sainthood and brings the life of a saint down to earth. The saint's life is not about doing, but it is about being. Being always points to relationship. The placement and timing of Jesus' teaching in Matthew's gospel is wonderfully executed. For Jesus has just been teaching in their synagogues and preaching across Galilee. He has been healing people from all types of physical and spiritual illnesses. Now that he has gotten everyone's attention, he decides to use familiar language to teach something new. In the ancient Near East, especially in North Africa, there were sayings which began with the word blessed or blessed. For centuries, these proverb-like sayings were common in that part of the world. The difference between the previous sayings and what Jesus says in Matthew is that the first hints towards some type of reward based upon works, and the second is rooted in faith. The second also paints a portrait of the culturally undesirable and socially unacceptable as blessed. Moreover, the previous version of the blessed sayings reflect the cultural and social values of that region, which focus on tangible gains. For example, blessed implies outward blessings and rewards. Even though the Greek word makaroi means happy, such happiness is dependent upon one's external circumstances and events. Jesus' statement are counter to what the disciples and the people may have expected. He is telling them that their happiness does not come from external circumstances. Like the prophets of old, one is blessed because of what they endure. This teaching from the mountain breaks and reshapes the categories of all of Jesus' listeners. In this teaching, those who suffer and mourn, who are meek and submissive, who crave righteousness, who are merciful and pure of heart, are also happy. If we pay, pay close attention to those attributes, we will notice that they are inner attributes which cannot be measured quantitatively. It takes all of these attributes to withstand the last three blessed statements, to make peace, to contend with slander, and maintain righteousness even under persecution. If we keep reading long past verse 12, we will notice that Jesus gives an in-depth teaching of the blessed sainthood. It is a wonder 
that verses 1 through 12 are considered the Sermon on the Mount because Jesus does not finish this sermon, nor does he come down from the mountain until chapter 8. My favorite passage out of all of this is, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father who is in heaven. Why? Because I have found that hostile situations cause me to totally lean on God. We are happy in loving our enemies because it deepens our relationship with God. The closer we are to Jesus, the more we can love like he loves. This is why the hymn writer pleads, O oh, master, let me walk with thee. So who are the saints? The answer is simple. The saints are those who have heard the good news. They are those who feel compelled to share it and live it out wherever they may be. Yes, we are all saints. As difficult as it sounds, we must live out the blessed and happy statements right here and right now. Bert Bacharach and Hal David were so right when they said, what the world needs now is love. Let us not wait for people to agree with us, to love us first, to respect us, to express, not express anger towards us, or even to see us or notice us. We are blessed even in seasons of great strife and confusion. We are blessed and we rejoice in the Lord because he has empowered us with his Holy Spirit to love. It is through his spirit that we can love our enemies and pray for those who persecute and revile us. Theologian Charles F. Shaput says, to be a saint means to be fully alive in Jesus Christ. Sainthood is not a matter of sentimental posturing or simply being nice. It is about being passionately in love with Jesus Christ. A passionate love for Christ will make us listen to others with empathetic ears. A passionate love for Christ will empower us to speak of him in places where it may not be welcomed. How many times do you and I ask, am I in love with Jesus? Does my love for him direct my thoughts? Do I listen like Jesus? Am I attentive to the Holy Spirit? Rather than defining saints by what they do, perhaps we can focus on how boldly they love Christ and others during trying circumstances. Now we have all heard the saying, love God and love others. Since we are clothed in his love, let us like the saints before us, treat this love better than the American Express card and never leave home without it. Saints, we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Let us share God's love with everyone, even our enemies. I say, especially with our enemies. This intention of love must become an extension of love in this moment of time. Let us walk with the master and live as children of the Most High. Amen. And believing that Jesus gives us the grace, we can say, we believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all, all that is seen and unseen. And unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became, he became incarnate, incarnate from the Virgin Mary, Mary and, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, he suffered death and was buried. On, On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We praise your abiding guidance, O God, for you sent us Jesus, our teacher, to model for us the way of love. O God, we pray that your universal presence helps all nations and races in the transforming work of peace. Let all cultures and religions serve you in harmony and in mutual respect. Let us pray. Heal us and help us to serve you. O oh God, you proclaim your truth in every age by many voices. Bless all civil and religious leaders with your spirit of compassionate authority and grant them wisdom in the exercise of their duties. Be manifested in these election proceedings. Let us pray. Help us to hear and know your voice. O oh God, encourage and protect those in the armed and foreign services and their families, especially Drew, Michael, Mark, Maya and Tom, Will, Scott, Michael, Jonathan, and Steve. Strengthen them to serve with honor. Let us pray. Help us to seek your strength and justice. O oh God, hear our prayers for this parish family as we appreciate our blessings, birthdays, anniversaries, and joyful events. Inspire us to be of one heart and mind. Let us pray. Unite us in our care of others and ourselves. O oh God, help us to remember those who alone and those who are broken in body or spirit. We pray for those who are ill, recovering from surgery, or in desperate need, especially Andrea, Barbara, Bob and Jane, Claudia, Siri, Anne, Francis, Ashley, Sally, Gail, the Miles family, Molly, Marjorie, Carla, Lisa, Bruce, Anne, Steve, and all those we name to you now. Let us pray. Help us to heal and support in your name. O oh God, we pray for those killed or injured in acts of terrorism, injustice, gun violence, abuse, or prejudice of any kind, and from the consequences of diseases and natural disasters, fires and floods. We pray for the healing of those suffering from the coronavirus and those ministering to them. Let us pray. Protect us with your powerful presence and peace. O oh God, your power brings us to birth, your providence guides our lives, and by your call we enter eternal life. We pray for all whom we love and see no longer, especially those who we name to you now. Let us pray. Bless us with faith and hope to live for you all the days of our lives.
O oh, gracious God, we thank you for the gifts of relationships, for the patience to allow your transforming love to change and uplift us. As you show us the way to love, we ask for the power of healing peace, that we may become reconciled to one another and to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And now we begin a sacred time to honor those we love but see no longer. We pray for all who have died and now are present in your eternal love and life. We especially remember our parishioners, friends, and members of our families who have died since All Saints Day of 2019. Evelyn Nancy Bomar Hastings. Howard Dale. Park Densmore. Philip Downey. James Eakins. Francisca Eva Ewalt. Irene Figgy, Anthony Gadachi, Clint Hamilton, Laverne Hennebury, Mary Humiston, Donald H. Lakowski, Carlos. Alberto Rentiera Mantilla, Christopher Marshall, Elizabeth Moyer, Catherine O'Brien Ray, Doug Shaw, Gwyn Shaw, Leslie Farrington Snap. Derek Steele, Keiko Takeda, Valmore Valaquet, Mara Vittles. Gracious God, when we read names, when we remember those that we've loved and seen no longer that have died years ago, memories and feelings surface. We bring all into this moment, Jesus. You hold all of our feelings, all of our memories, and you hold us now as we hold all these names and honor them with your love, your light, and your peace. We know they are fully alive in you and through you, and we thank you for all the ways they loved us and we love them. May we bring all of that love into this moment as we continue in this celebration of Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. So thank you and help us now to be ever more, ever more fully in this moment. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against, against you in thought, thought, word, and deed, by what, what we have, have done, done and by, and by what, what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
For the, for the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy on us and, and forgive, forgive us, that we may be delight in your will and, and walk in your ways to the, the glory of, of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 And may the peace of the living Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. So I welcome you as we continue on in this very sacred All Saints Day. We continue on with the feelings that we have. And I thank you for tuning in. And I hope all of you are allowing yourselves to really be in this moment right now. Normally, we would have more of a way of recognizing those we love, but here we are in this pandemic, we light a candle to symbolize the single light of Jesus Christ that permeates all of creation. And we've rung a singing bowl. And may you continue to sing in thanksgiving for all that you have received from those you love. And so I thank you for being here. Thank you for your presence wherever you are. Thank you for the prayers that we share today. And in a special way, I thank you for any sacrifice you make in love for anyone, for any way that you give in love your time, your talents, and treasures. And I humbly thank you for any consideration for pledging this year. This, I can't think of as a more challenging year. I think this year, this pandemic has affected all of us emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and financially. We are in this together, and I thank you for any way that you can share in the ministry of Jesus Christ through St. Francis Church and through your pledging. So thank you, and God bless and multiply whatever we receive. And thank you for the ways that you want to contribute to the military packing, which will be November 8th, and read the e-news for details. Normally, on an All Saints Day and other feast days of the church calendar, we would have a baptism. But we're not in church, and the way baptisms are sanctioned by our diocese now is that they're private, outdoors, and not during a service. But we will have a baptism on November 15th. The Brian Russell family will be honoring their little one, Aiden, at 2 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon outside. So we bring them into this moment also. And on this sacred day, I have one sacred joke, and I tried to find something that was remotely related to all saints. And here it goes. What do you call someone with no body and just a nose? Nobody knows. <laughs> so let us continue now with listening from our hearts to the anthem, The Lamb. Stop. 
softest clothing woolly bright gave thee such a tender voice making all the bells rejoice little lamb who made thee dost thou know who made thee little lamb who made thee dost thou know Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Truly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever then humbles himself as this child, is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Receive, O Lord, these gifts presented by your holy people for the work of your holy church. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. 
You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would, we would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into human family, and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this, Do this for, for the remembrance, remembrance of, of me. me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do, do this, this for the remembrance, remembrance of, of me. me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ, Christ has died Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring, Bring all, all of us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with blessed Francis and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us unite our hearts, our minds, all our strength, and be present to what Jesus is for us in his body and in his blood as we pray together a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe, I believe that, that you are truly present in the blessed, blessed sacrament of, of the altar. altar. I, I love you above all things, things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 